I've got some bad news for you. Your amplifier doesn't make as much power as you think. You've all seen the amp dynos on YouTube, and I'm going to explain to you why the power you see on an amp dyno is not the power you're going to get when you actually connect an amplifier up to some speakers. Now, there are several reasons for this. I'm not going to cover every possible reason in this video. There's just a couple that I want to highlight for you. The first one is something that a lot of people in the car audio world are very familiar with, and that's this concept called box rise. I don't like the term box rise. I'd rather call it impedance rise. Impedance is the word you use when you're talking about resistance in an AC circuit. And the thing to remember is that music is operating on AC power. That's alternating current. In a DC circuit, like you might expect, from your car battery, you can just visualize electrons moving in a path. But in an AC circuit, what happens is the electrons kind of pulse back and forth at some frequency. Like in your house, for example, it's oscillating at 60 cycles per second, also known as 60 hertz. You can see this when you play a test tone and then measure that with an oscilloscope. You get this wave. One cycle would be starting here, going to a peak, going to a valley, and then starting off at zero where you started. The peaks and valleys on that wave are what causes your speaker cone to move in and out. And the resistance in an AC circuit is actually dependent upon the frequency that you're playing. And this happens if the speaker is in free air or if the speaker is in a box, which is why I don't like to call it box rise. It's more of an accident of AC electricity as opposed to something that's specific to speakers. There are several ways that you can measure this impedance rise. I like to use this thing here called a DATS. That stands for Dayton Audio Test System. You just plug this into the USB port on your computer, hook up the alligator clips to your speaker, and it'll play a sweep. You can see on that sweep how the resistance changes as a function of the frequency frequency. Now the DATS is not the only way to do this. There are other tools you can use to get that information. I'll show you at least one of those later on in the video, so make sure you keep watching. So how does that impact amplifier power? Well, there are a lot of different ways to calculate power. One way you can do it is to use voltage and resistance. And so if the resistance changes for a given amount of voltage, that means the power you're going to get is going to change. Now there's a lot of interesting things that go on with speaker impedance or resistance. Uh, one thing, for example, here I've got a preloaded subwoofer enclosure that I got from Down for Sound. This thing came pre-wired to 1 ohm, but if you measure it, it measures about 1.5 ohms. I'll explain that later, so keep watching. Now the next reason is probably one of the least well-known and least understood reason, and it's a thing called power factor. This right here is a 4 ohm braking resistor, and if you were to open up one of the SMD81 amp dynos, you'd find something very similar to this. So when you see one of these amp dynos on YouTube, what's going on is we're hooking the amplifier up to a resistive load. But a speaker is not a simple resistor. Right here, I've got a speaker cone, and this is the voice coil right here. Another name for a coil of wires is an inductor. This is an inductor from a passive crossover. Your speaker makes music by passing current through this coil, which creates electromagnetic field, which pushes against the speaker magnet, which causes this cone to move. This is a type of reactive load. When you switch from a resistive load to a reactive load, something weird happens. With a resistive load, your amperage and your voltage are going to ride the same wave, so the current and the volts are in sync with each other. In that case, it's pretty easy to calculate the power. You just take the RMS voltage, or multiply that by the RMS amps, and that will give you the actual true power. In a situation like that, you could in theory take a simple multimeter, read the volts, read the amps, and be able to calculate your power. With a reactive load, the voltage and the current don't ride the same wave, they diverge. So their peaks and valleys don't happen at the exact same time. With an inductive load, the current is gonna lag behind the voltage, and with a capacitive load, the voltage is gonna lag behind the current. And because the voltage and the current are out of sync, you can't just multiply these two numbers together and get the actual amplifier power. If you do that, instead of getting the true power, you end up getting a thing called the apparent power. I've seen some people call this volt amps because you get it by multiplying the volts times the amps. Just a quick note, whenever we measure voltage and amperage with AC current, we always want to use RMS. I'll give you a link to a video up here that will explain what RMS is and why we should use it instead of a peak or some other number. Okay, so what do we do if we have reactive power? How do we calculate the actual real power that we're getting in our system? Well, that's actually a pretty straightforward thing. 
What you would do is you would measure the voltage and the amperage and get the waveform for the voltage and the amperage and then calculate the angular difference between the two waveforms. And then after you have the angular difference between the two waveforms, you're gonna find the cosine of that angle and then multiply the apparent power by the cosine of that angle. Now the cosine of that angle has a name, we call that the power factor. So what you have to do is find the power factor and then multiply your apparent power by the power factor to get the true power. Now, if you have your amplifier hooked up to a pure resistive load, the power factor is going to be one. That's because there's no angular difference between the voltage and the amperage and the cosine of zero is one. Now, the wattage you get from an amp dyno is not wrong. It's not an incorrect number. It's just not the same number you're gonna get if you're actually using a reactive load. Why do we need the amp dyno then if it's not gonna give us a real world power number? The amp dyno is basically a piece of laboratory equipment. Its job is to make sure you have a controlled environment so that you can get consistent measurements that aren't gonna be confounded by some other factor. So what the amp dyno does is it gives you a way to have an unbiased comparison across different amplifiers. And that's really important for you and I as consumers because there's nothing stopping the manufacturer of an amplifier from just slapping any old number on their amplifier. Now you probably wanna know how much power your amplifier is actually generating in your own system. I just went over the math behind that and that kind of math is really unrealistic for the average person to do. For starters, how in the world are you gonna measure the angular difference between the two waves? You've gotta have some good test equipment if you actually wanna do that. And when I say test equipment, I mean anything from, say, a lab-grade benchtop oscilloscope all the way to one of these really inexpensive meters you can get from Amazon. Now, I can't recommend either one of those things because that big benchtop oscilloscope is gonna be hard to drag around. And that meter from Amazon, if you just read the safety warnings on those things, you'll quickly realize that you don't want one of them. So what does that leave you with? That leaves you with two other things. One thing is an AC clamp meter. If you can find a really good professional grade AC clamp meter, they should be able to give you the power factor and might even be able to calculate the wattage correctly. Now I'm not an electrical engineer or an electrician and I spend hours on the internet browsing through Amazon and looking at user manuals and I've yet to narrow it down to one that I could recommend. But it turns out that that's all really a waste of my time because we already have a tool made just for that. That's this guy right here. This is the SMD AMM1 audio multimeter. It's been designed specifically for audio applications. I got this so that I could do some amp dynos. So if you would like to see me start dynoing amplifiers here on my channel, you can let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. One thing to notice about this device is it has a spot for your standard multimeter probes and it has this hole in the middle. That hole in the middle is doing the same thing as a clamp meter would do. You run your speaker wire through the middle of this and you can probe your speaker wires with this one. And that gives you the ability to measure two things at once, which is really kind of handy. Most of everybody that uses these things just use it as an amp dyno, but it can do a lot more than that. It has several different modes. In this mode right here, it will display both RMS volts and RMS amps, which means you could use this to calculate the apparent power just by multiplying those two things together. Or you can go to the next mode and it'll do that math for you. Right here in this mode, the AMM1 will provide your volt amps as well as your power factor. So you can just multiply the volt amps by the power factor. And, or if you really don't like doing math, you can try out real-time power mode. In real-time power mode, it will display both the ohms and the watts. Now, earlier I said that I would show you a tool you could use to understand your box rise. Well, there you go. Now you can compare the actual resistance of a given frequency with the power you're getting at that frequency and you can see what's going on with your box rise. There's also an AC frequency slash impedance mode that will show you the frequency you're playing through your system and the impedance at that frequency. So you could use this with some test tones in order to find out what your box tuning frequency is, just like you can do with a DAT. If you don't want to use this to do that, you can buy one of these SMD IMSGs. This thing will give you all the same information that a DAT will give you, but you don't to hook it up to a computer. So in addition to that real-time power mode, it also has 
dyno power mode. What happens in this mode is uh, you turn the volume up and as you turn the volume up, the power will climb and that will continue until the clip light turns on. And when the clip light turns on, it'll stop reading and it will show you the maximum power during that entire dyno run. If you were to connect this thing to a resistive load, the dyno mode would give you the exact same result as the AD1. To learn more about why a system wired to one ohm doesn't always read one ohm, click on this video right here. If you want to learn more about the DATs, click on this video right here. Before I go, I want to say thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon. Right here is a list of my $10 patrons, and I want to give a special shout out to my $25 patrons, Dylan and Ben. Thank you so much for your help. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and I'll see you on the next one.